What's up guys? My name is Jake. Welcome to Abandoned, episode 37. This is the show where we talk about some of the most interesting abandoned places in the world. NASCAR is an incredibly large sport in North America. It's even arguably the largest spectator sport in the world. It's synonymous with American sports culture, especially in the South, and generates revenue worth billions of dollars. An aspect of the sport, every bit as important as the cars and drivers themselves, is the track. Multi-million dollar facilities built to withstand enormous crowds and the cars. But what happens when one of these NASCAR tracks are left in the dust? Today I wanted to talk about the legendary North Wilkesboro Speedway. In 1945, a man named Enoch Staley had attended a small stock car race when he realized that the town where he lived, North Wilkesboro, needed a track of its own. So along with some investors, the North Wilkesboro Speedway was born when it was constructed for $1,500. The dirt track opened in 1946 and quickly gained popularity and notoriety, with newspapers claiming that North Wilkesboro was the new racing mecca for northwestern North Carolina. An estimated 10,000 people came to the inauguration event, and the track's popularity and capacity only grew from there. Many of the drivers who later drove in NASCAR were from or around the area of North Wilkesboro, and grew up either watching races there or driving in them. It wasn't long after when the National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing was born in Daytona Beach from creator Bill France, who wanted a more uniform racing organization. Over in North Carolina, the Wilkesboro Speedway continued in popularity and became a very well-respected dirt track through the 1950s. Enoch Staley was firmly behind NASCAR's creation, and was enthusiastic on races taking place at North Wilkesboro, and that's exactly what happened. The track was extremely popular with fans, and as NASCAR grew, so did the Speedway, with new grandstands and accompanying facilities. The Speedway could now hold up to 60,000 people, who many claimed had the best views of any NASCAR facility. Although, even with these modernizations in the 70s and 80s, the track and its facilities were still a little behind of the NASCAR standards. Honestly though, fans didn't really care. Because the track was much smaller relative to other NASCAR tracks, top speeds would only reach around 150 miles per hour, instead of 200 plus at tracks like Daytona. The slower speeds and smaller track meant there was just a lot more action with competitive, legendary drivers racing for first. Not only did the track produce a great show for fans, but for many visitors, even details down to the concession stands didn't cheap out on what others did. It's small details like that which set the track apart from most, and with that there was much more of an emotional connection to the Speedway from its homegrown feel. Junior Johnson had described race weekends like a big fair, kinda like Disney World for race fans. Although, things started moving downhill for the raceway. Longtime creator and owner Enoch Staley had passed away on May 22, 1995. Less than one month later, owner of Speedway Motorsports Inc., Brutton Smith, had purchased 50% ownership from the family. And by early 1996, the remaining 50% was sold to Bob Bear, a track developer and marketer for an alleged $7 million. The family now had no control of the track, and speculation arose on the possibility of Wilkesboro losing its Winston Cup race dates with NASCAR. While the new owners had hoped to add new races to the track, the odds were enormously stacked against them and had been building like that for some time. By this point, the popularity of NASCAR exploded, which just meant the organization required more. NASCAR began building new tracks that would fit exactly their needs in terms of facilities, and also with the added benefit of adding more people, like Texas Motor Speedway, which was able to hold a staggering 180,000 people, while the Wilkesboro track was only able to hold around 60,000 people. This along with its very inconvenient location and its out-of-date facilities just made it a poor choice for NASCAR to continue races there. So the final NASCAR race to be held at North Wilkesboro Speedway took place on September 29, 1996, with Jeff Gordon taking first. The Speedway was now without a NASCAR future, and even a future of racing as a whole. The dates for next season's race were given to the newly opened Texas Motor Speedway, and following the last race at North Wilkesboro, the track was closed. Both owners had attempted to find possible events and races to be held at the track, but to no avail. The track was put up for sale in 2003 for $12 million, despite the evaluation-suggested price of $5 million. 
Because of the steep price, of course the Speedway was never sold. For the next couple of years, the track sat vacant and rotting with very few events until 2009, when racing finally returned. Goodyear had actually stepped in to sponsor the track for another three years, with the name now changed to the very catchy, the historic North Wilkesboro Speedway presented by Goodyear. The track held several 300 lap races, all considered to be a success. However, behind the scenes, things were a lot more grim. In May of 2011, Speedway Associates abruptly ended their partnership and closed the North Wilkesboro Speedway for the last time. Now the track sits vacant and in awful condition. After being abandoned for more than seven years, the Speedway is slowly deteriorating, with paint peeling and steel rusting, grandstands structurally unsound, and buildings with walls and roofs caving in. The pavement, which cars screamed across on, going 150 miles an hour, now has grass creeping through. The deterioration has gotten to the point now where it's likely that the facilities in their current form will never be used again. So what is going to happen to the legendary speedway? Well, actually nothing. There are no serious plans to bring back the speedway, or even demolish it. The track will, however, live on in Disney Pixar's Cars 3. No, I'm serious. In that decently… marginable film, they visit an abandoned racetrack that heavily resembles the North Wilkesboro Speedway. And that's not a coincidence, the track was actually a huge inspiration to that scene in the film. The Speedway was also used in the filming of the East Coast Road Trip in Top Gear's 16th season. That episode, which I highly suggest you go watch, aired in 2010, just a year before the track's permanent closure. But now the legendary Speedway is left with no future. Some hope that a wealthy individual will step in and buy the property, but the logistical nightmare that the track presents makes that dream rather unlikely. If a demolition is ever proposed, I have a strong belief that people are going to fight it. And maybe that's a good thing. The North Wilkesboro Speedway, for many, is a reminder of the old NASCAR, before it grew into the mega organization it is now. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but many race fans certainly miss the homegrown feeling of the races from the past. The North Wilkesboro Speedway is essentially where NASCAR began. It's just something that couldn't keep up with the speed of the organization in the beginning it made popular. Anyway guys, my name is Jake, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat, and thank you very much for watching. <laughs>